I did a few more experiments with MOSFETs in the past, the days before, and I tested a P MOSFET here. And also I made the same circuit with an N MOSFET. But the aim of all these circuits was to keep that MOSFET cool, more or less cool, so not extremely hot, when it was driven on its gate with, say, something. And I found out that that had to be a generator frequency, but anyway, I will tell more about it. Um, when that MOSFET was driven on its gate and kept quite cool while driving at the same time a quite, a quite high load. And here is that load, a few lamps, incandescent lamps, each 12 volts. And well, let me show at first how it works. <coughs> Uh, I made a generator here, a stable generator that drives the MOSFET. And that's very important. Uh, when you want to drive a MOSFET with, say, static voltages, and you can see here um, a drawing that I made in an earlier video the MOSFET gets very, very hot. So when you add, say, a static voltage here to a P MOSFET, or here a static voltage to an N MOSFET, the MOSFET gets very, ho uh, very hot. And my aim was to um, find out a circuit in which that MOSFET uh, did not get very hot while driving, say, a high current load, like, st like this. And I had two conclusions. The first conclusion was that the MOSFET must be driven at its gate with a generator. And you can change the duty cycle of that generator to the gate, and that uh, duty cycle is more or less responsible in combination with uh, other say components uh, for the heat development in that MOSFET. And I've used the P MOSFET because I wanted to uh, say generate a varying voltage and current opposite to the earth. And the earth is here, minus and ground. So, this is the final circuit that I made. And it worked with all, say, all kinds of flaws. But anyway, I want to show it. Perhaps it's interesting for everyone uh, liking to do experiments. So, here is an A stable multi vibrator. We set the duty cycle here with that uh, 47k potentiometer and it works due to all the components here, the resistor, the base resistor, especially the base resistor, in combination with uh, the two capacitors that are uh, 4700 picofarad. This one is, has that value, this one has a somewhat lower value, 3 and 3. And by changing the duty cycle, we drive uh, the MOSFET and make the um, incandescent lamps light more or less. I want to demonstrate that now. Uh, put out all the lights. Take some time, of course. Here we see the duty cycle. 
that's generated by the two transistor A stable multivibrator. Here is that potentiometer with which we can set the duty cycle and at the same time we look here at the frequency that 7.3 kilohertz. <coughs> so change the duty cycle and look at the lamps. You hear the beeping on the background perhaps. So you see the lamps lighting up much more. The duty cycle changes also. That's very important to see. You see how that completely changes into this waveform. So the MOSFET is pinched off much more or less more when the duty cycle changes. And one of the most important conclusions was that only in that way I could keep that MOSFET cool in a certain way. It's now a little bit warm, perhaps a little bit hot, but when you add say a cooling plate of say 4 by 4 centimeters, 1 millimeter aluminum, that's surely enough to make this MOSFET, um, to cool this MOSFET and give it a very long lifetime. Anyway, so let's look at the circuits again. Switch on the lights now. Uh, the MOSFET itself, you can see here that I've mounted between the gate and the minus a resistor of 2 mega ohm. So there's a certain balance here between that resistor, 2 mega ohm, and this resistor here that in fact sets the bias. That's important to tell. Duty cycle here. Frequency set here with the values of these two capacitors. A stable multi vibrator pin connections and say uh, of course when we add a positive voltage um, to a, a P MOSFET um, that will have an effect on how the gate will react on the different um, say energy levels coming in out of that a stable multivibrator. So I can only say this works and well. A, a flaw, there are a few flaws in this circuit. Sometimes you need a start switch because this uh, multivibrator doesn't want to start automatically when you when you slowly raise the voltage, the supply voltage between say 0 and 12 volt or 24 volts or 30 volts, sometimes it doesn't want to start. I have made another video on my YouTube channel about that problem and I will try to give the link. So that's why I've uh, here that start switch. This suddenly uh, gives the A stable multivibrator its voltage and with that pulse in a certain way it say always starts. That's one uh, problem. 
Uh, I will do more research on that anyway. And the other problem is here. You, it only works for, say, incandescent lamps. Perhaps it will work for LED lamps. I have not tested that. But I've tested here. I've mounted here an electrolytic capacitor and the MOSFET immediately burned out. I don't know exactly why, but anyway, uh, it's important to tell. But with this, car, with this car lamp and other car lamps, it worked properly. <coughs> Here again, another drawing. In fact, exactly the same. You see the duty cycle issue, the bias, the 2M2 uh, resistor that also adds to the bias of that P MOSFET, the pin connections, and here again something about how to drive that MOSFET properly when you want to keep it cool and that has to be done with a generator that sets the duty cycle. Anyway, pen over somewhat the 10k potentiometer the MOSFET itself it sets the bias this is a part of the bias, that resistor. Uh, the 2 mega ohm 2 resistor, that's also a part of the bias. The capacitor of 0 0.1 microfarad or 100 nanofarad, that's the same, that's driving the gate of that P MOSFET. And here the generator again. So there's not so much more to tell. I wish you luck. The circuit has some flaws, especially uh, the fact that the multi vibrator doesn't always want to start, so you need here. A start switch and you can see and hear the sparks and at the same time perhaps how the lamps act they start the whole circuit starts to function anyway <coughs>